Hey everyone, Hunter from Ron Circuits here. Today I'm going to be moving fry from our hang ons to the next stage garage, which is the 20 gallons. I've got about 18 20 gallons right now cleared out and ready, so let's start moving some fry. Turn off the air first. These are uh, Walter I have. So after I strip the fry from the uh, females, uh, they go in a hang on, which is this right here. They'll be in this for about a month or two. They'll uh, get a lot of size in them by then. And then uh, when they're big enough, they'll uh, go in a 20 gallon and they'll usually go with fry from uh, within a few weeks span. So usually if it's a fry are more than like three weeks apart when they were born, I don't mix them. At that size difference, they are uh, prone to pick on each other. So around two or three weeks is where you want to stick around if you want to mix fry together and save on space. So I don't, I, even with all the tanks you see, I wouldn't be able to mix, I wouldn't be able to separate every single spawn to their own tank. It just take up too much room. I've got all these tanks already labeled for what fry are going to go in there. I'm just going to be putting them in, counting them, and then writing on the tank how many I got. So, the Walter, I got about 200 in there. That was from about seven or eight females, so a really big spawn. Next thing I'm going to be doing our Bound Town Reef and then regular Town Reef. And this, uh, the way we have these hang-ons, we made a hole in here so we can feed them, but there's a lip all the way around so they can't jump out. These are actually uh, from our town reef breeder colony, and they're actually split genes, so we actually get albinos from them too. And then we also have a pure albino town reef group.
Next I'm gonna do uh, our fire hat, Super Red Empress. So after I put the fry in the uh, 20 gallons, they'll stay in here for about, depending on the species and how many I put in there, a month to like four months. If I only put about 20 of one species in there, they'll, they could be in there a lot longer than if I got 100 of the same species in there. Because they'll need a bigger tank in a month or two. And after they graduate from the uh, 20 gallons, they either go to the 40 gallons, 75s, or the vats. For grot. Until they're big enough to sell. I think I've got about 23 species I'm going to be moving today into the 20s. This is from a previous batch that are older. So these fry are about, I think, two weeks apart. There's a bunch in there, close to 120. Next will be our Midnight Siri Peacock. Got a bunch of these guys, ready to be moved. And all these tanks are on a drip system. You can see all the drips coming down. So that water comes straight from our well, goes into each individual tank, and each individual tank drains into its own drain, and that all goes to the pond. So, don't need to do water changes, and, and these sponges, believe it or not, I won't have to clean these for probably about two months, uh, probably a month, month and a half, two months, because the fry ray don't produce much waste at this size. And then just one sponge in each tank, and then one uh, extra airdrop. Basically, the only thing I gotta do is feed them and let them grow. Out there, probably close to 90, or even more, a lot more than you think. Next, there'll be a zebra obliquin and then flame back.
with Victorian creatures. The uh, little zebra oblique ones are cute. They already got their stripes to them. So usually when I do uh, two, two different species or more in a single tank, um, I like to write down uh, the quantity for each, not as combined. That way, let's say I put 25 of each species and in two months, I'm left with five of one and, and still 25 of the other. I know the one that still has 25 was picking on the other one, and the other ones were weaker for some reason, so I know not to mix them again uh, or mix them with another species because they aren't combat compatible with each other at that size. Here are the flame backs. And these two species look completely different, so there's no way I'm going to mix them up. You want to make sure you just slowly acclimate them for the to the uh, to the new tank. Almost all these tanks are the same temperature, but they're the same pH. Um, all the uh, parameters are pretty much the same. So I just want to make sure they adjust to the temperature well. Okay, one more hang on. There it is. <clears throat> Alright. And these are uh, paint markers, so we've got a Home Depot. But it doesn't come off. You have to use a razor blade to get it off, so. In a wet environment like this, they're very nice. Next is going to be German Yellow Blaze. And then when I'm done putting all the fry in there, I'll, I'll uh, grab the, the uh, camera and, and show you all the individual uh, tanks so you can see the fry and what they look like.
these guys are about three weeks older than the other ones. They're a little bigger. Hopefully you can see. Really good batch. Let's do 100 or more. Next is our OB Ref and Borali. And if you're breeding multiple species, it is really best. Uh, what, what we found best is just keep them separated as long as you can. At least till they're about inch and a half, two inches. They do so much better just being being species only for the first few months of their life. Especially peacocks, you really don't want to be mixing peacock species. Uh, not only because they're, they're more passive most time, but also because it's really hard to tell the difference between uh, most peacock species because the female is all the same, except for like uh, albinos and then uh, dragon bloods and then OB peacocks. Anything else, really, you're going to mix up. Another thing, we use the uh, chalk markers, I think that's what they're called, I like this, for the uh, hang-ons. Do not use these permanent markers on this, it, it won't come off. A little smaller batch, with around 50. Next is going to be Tangerine Tiger. Another little important note. Let's say you're breeding five different species of peacocks. And the females all look the same. And uh, as juveniles they all look the same. You don't want to have, let's say, five consistent tanks in a row with each species. Like, let's say you have Regal Peacock in here and Nagara Flametail in here. You don't want to do that because if one jumps over, you just, this whole entire batch of Regals over here is tainted now. Because now you have a different species and you can't tell the difference. So, as you'll see, I have them spaced out. So, let's say I got two Peacocks. In between them will be a species I can't mix up. Let's say like a uh, Macobe Island, a Victorian, or a species of Hap that it's easy to tell the difference between. Because it, it will happen. If, if you've got two, two tanks right next to each other, there's a very high possibility. At least one jumps over. And by that time, the, the whole strain, strain is just ruined now. And you won't be able to bring them back. You'll have to start over. That's they got no eye. Poor little guy. Wrong for you.
If you're wondering why we have the uh, that little divider in there, uh, someone we learned from somebody that all the the um, poo and leftover food usually um, food usually collects over here on the other side. Next will be the uh, our albino red sun. I keep this separated from our regular red sun because they uh, they throw split gene fry too. So I want to continue the the pure albino red sun strain. <clears throat> These guys are breeding very well. Quite a bit in the ground on sixty. Right, next is McCoby Island. By the time we're done, all these hang on should pretty much be all cleared out. Should have another hang on of a Kobe somewhere. There they are. <clears throat> Hundred twenty. This will be our regal peacock. There's only going to be about twenty, twenty-five in here. Usually, I like. I'd rather uh, put more in a tank. It's kind of a waste when you have this many fish to only put twenty in one tank. But that's all I got for within like a three or four week span. So they'll they'll get their own tank.
I'm about 20. Next will be Bucochromus Nortaniana. This next tank is going to have three different species, all because I only have five to 15 of each, just small, small clutches. Like the first one's going to be my Sobo Deep, I only got, I'm just counting them in there, one, two, three, four, five, six, and six is when I got them, so I can't really justify a whole tank just for them, so they're going to have to get mixed. Mabuna and Hacks tend to be a little hardier, so mixing them at a smaller size is usually fine. This will be Red Top Numbi. One, two, three, four, five, six in there. Got another hanger right on hang on a right top numbie. Five total, the red top numbi, six in the Masobo, and then last will be some quasi. Twenty of those. Next is going to be the split gene red sun. There'll be regular and albino in these.
And then I have more on the other side. This guy's a little too big. Check the other ones. These both are good. The other one's just a little too big. There, they'll probably pick on them. And the ones in the tank. Let's go 140 probably in there. It's a lot. Next to the Finos, which are right here. Peninsula Star Sapphire. Got about 30. This is definitely a species you want to keep separated most of most of its life. At least till around like three inches or so. Bang of sunshine. That goes a little too big. Sixty total. Pretty good clutch. Just 
think it's going to have two uh, Victorians. Annie of Color and then Ruffin will beat them. Here's the Annie of Color. Fifteen or so. Here are the rectum and oblique ones. Get about twenty, twenty-five. Last is going to be one of the sip, uh, the Tanganikins I breed, Sip Chromos Blue Flash. Got about five in each hang on. The first two clutches I've gotten from the uh, from my group. There we go. Five more in here. All right, that's the last tank. show you guys from the front panel glass. Okay, I'll welcome and zoom in. Show you all different species. So this is the Cypochromus Blue Flash. Nicknamed the Sardine Cichlid. These are the Anio color and Refin Oblique one. You look close, they're already starting to get their colors to them. Bang of Sunshine. Color up at a very small size. Fenachilla Star Sapphire. Just starting to get their markings, little cuties. The uh, Red Sun Split Gene. These all came from the Split Gene parents where they throw off regular albinos. Red Top Numbi, Quasi, and Masobos. The Masobos are the yellow ones in the back. There's one of the well, uh, that's a red top number there. And quasis have the uh, curved face because they're a labiotrophus. Fuku Noto. Already got their little stripe. Try to get the focus on one. There you go. They're really cute. Regal Peacock. Little guys. A Kobe Island. They grow very fast. Little male right here. These are the uh, pure red suns. Tangerine tiger. They got really nice markings already for this this size. Obi red from Boroi.
this is one of my favorite species because compared to most other fish, the females actually have a lot of color to them. They've got nice orange fins and the, the uh, blossom they have is really, really nice. German yellow blaze. These guys will start coming up about an inch. That's when I'll probably see the first male. Flame back and zebra oblique ones. See the zebra oblique ones already got their stripes. Trying to get the focus. There's some right there. Midnight peacock. Fire hap. Super red empress. Bino Taiwan and then the regular Taiwan. The Abano one to that leucistic color, the black eyes. And Walter I have. These guys are a little smaller, but I want to make sure they they uh, do good, so I wanted to give them the base tank I could. I should grow very fast, but that's it guys, hope you enjoyed the video, please like and su subscribe, I'll try to do more videos like this more often, hope you found it entertaining, thanks.